and welcome to my YouTube video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate three different methods of using the mattress stitch for seaming seed stitch. In the first method we're just going to connect the bumps from side to side. In the second method we're going to work one stitch in on each either side. In the third method I will show a stockinette stitch salvage and working one stitch in on the other side and then we can look at the um, consequences of each one. So we're going to start out, I'm going to use a contrast color for the seam so you can see what's going on. I've threaded a tapestry needle. You want a blunt tip. I don't use those great big huge giant ones that you see for knitting. This is about a size 18. It works pretty good. This is worsted weight yarn so that works pretty good. So we're going to start right out by making a figure eight at the bottom of the seam and that connects the cast on edge to the cast on edge. So we have both the swatches facing right side up, cast on edge at the bottom, bind off edge at the top. Preferably you would like to have an even number of stitches. For example here I have 10 stitches. So that means at the beginning of the row I start with knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. This one, knit, purl, knit, purl. And then it's the opposite on the return rows. That way when I match it up, I'm matching up a knit, a purl. This was started out with knit, purl. So we have a purl with a knit. So that it makes the stockinette I mean the seed stitch continuous across the seam. Now if you have an odd number of stitches you can do it too but on one piece you would start with a knit and then you would end with a knit because it's odd. So on this piece you would start with a purl and end with a purl so that when you do seam it it still matches across the seam. So it just takes a little forethought. So we're just going to start right out by picking up going under one strand at the cast on edge from the back to the front and pull the yarn up and I'm leaving a short tail. Three or four inches is good. Then coming up in the same spot under the cast on edge on the left piece between the first stitch and the second stitch. And then I'm going to come up in the exact same spot where I started and what this does is it makes a figure eight. And you can see the figure eight right there. See that? And then we, I'm going to hold down the tail with my thumb here. I'm going to pull this tight. And what it does is it just brings the two pieces together so that there's no stair step across the bottom here. It matches up perfectly. Since we're on this side, then our next stitch is going to be on this side and we're just going to catch the edge of the purl bump right here on the edge. So you can see these bumps, they stand out. Here's one. They're every other row. So I'm going to go under this purl bump, pull my yarn through. I'm going to make this a little bigger so we can get up close and personal here. There we go. Then we're going to come back to the right piece and we're going to go under this purl bump and pull it through. Don't pull it tight right off. I only pull it tight after every three or four joins across and go to the other side through the purl bump. See the purl bumps here? They stick out on the edge. So we're going to go through this one. This one. So you're catching every other row on each piece. So now we've done a few and then we're going to hold on to our tail down here. I'm holding it between my thumb and my finger and I'm going to pull this tight. And you can see how it pulls the stitches in between each other so it maintains that seed stitch pattern across the seam. You can see the green yarn a little bit but if this were worked in white yarn you would not notice that very much. 
So I'm going to go ahead and seam all the way up to the top. I'll speed the video up during this portion and we'll stop near the top. Okay, as we get near the top here, I'm going to show you how to work the last stitches so that it comes out even at the top, similar to the figure eight at the bottom. So if we've connected all of our pearl bumps, and I'm gonna tighten it one last time. Let's shrink this down a little bit so we can see the whole thing. So here we have it. You want this to be the correct uh, width. You, it's easy on this particular seam to pull it too tight. So you would get something like this. You don't want that. So you want it to be about the same length as the fabric. This, this particular seam won't have much give to it. But you can see it matches up very nicely. Once you get up to the top, we're going to do a, a similar maneuver as to the figure eight. We're going to go under both stitches of the bind off stitch on this side, both legs. We're going to go under both legs of the bind off stitch on this side from front to back and again from front to back in the same spot here. So it's similar to our figure eight. Do you see that? That we started out with and we're going to pull it tight and what that does is it matches it up. It makes it perfectly smooth across the edge. Now, yes, we're seeing our green yarn there, but if this were in the white yarn, that makes the seam absolutely straight across the edge. Now, you've noticed that I have these tails of my swatches out. I should have mentioned that in the beginning. I do not weave in the ends first before I seam. Because no matter how, how careful you are, if you weave those ends in first, almost every time they're going to interfere with your seaming, and then their seam is going to look funky in that area. So I wait until I've finished my seam, then I weave in all the ends. So this was the method where we just connected the bumps. Let's turn it over. It looks really good on the other side as well. And you can't see the seaming thread. If it were white, it would be completely invisible. So this is a great method to use for joining pieces that need to be reversible. I love this method. You just need to know that you're going to see that little bit of white through there, but if it were the same color, it's perfectly invisible. It does not have any give though. It's not going to have any stretch. So let's go to the next method. This is also going to be with our seed stitch edge. Let's see, we want our bind off edges. There we go. Okay, so let's do this one. This one I am going to use the same green thread so that we can see. I'm threading my needle. Okay, we're going to start down here at the bottom and make our figure eight again. So when we're looking at seed stitch, we can see the columns of stitches. Do you see these columns? Here's the salvage stitch. We're going to be seaming between the salvage stitch and this column right here, which I call the edge stitch. And we're going to be seaming in under the bar that's between the edge stitch and the selvage. This is the bar. So here was the stitch and here's the bar from that stitch going over to here. This is a knit stitch and its bar is right here. This is a purl stitch. Its bar is right here and we're going to use every bar. Now in contrast to the swatch that we just did, this technique uses every row. So we're going to start out the same way. We're going to make our figure eight cast on. We're going to go under one strand of the cast on edge directly below that uh, the bars between those two columns of stitches. And we leave a 
tail long enough to weave in later. We're going to go in the same spot over here. Here is our salvage stitch. Here is the first column. So we're going to go under the strand between the two columns of the cast on edge. Then we're going to go back over here from back to front. All of these maneuvers are back to front. Whereas when you finish it at the top, you go from front to back. There's our figure eight. We're going to put our finger on the tail and pull it tight. Now you can start on the other side. It doesn't matter which side you start on, but you go one side, the other side, then back. Or start here, go here, and back here. Wherever you end, you're going to start your seaming on the opposite piece. So we're going to make it big here. So we're going to be seaming. This is our edge stitch. This is the selvage stitch. And this is what I call the edge stitch because that's what we're going to see on the right side of the seam. And there's the bars in between. See those bars? We're going to be going under the bars. So we're going to go under the first bar right here. And we're going to go to the opposite side. And we're going to go to, through the first bar on this side, which is right here. And then we're going to weave our way back and forth. We go down in the same spot where we came up. And you need to be really careful to not split your yarn. If you split the yarn, the seam will not come together. It'll get stuck. Go under the next bar. This is the salvage stitch. This is the edge stitch. We go under the bar. Salvage stitch, edge stitch, bar. We go down in the same hole where we came up, come under the bar, and after you do a few of these, then you can pull it tight. The reason you don't want to pull it tight every time is once you do pull it tight, it's really hard to see where your yarn came up in the last stitch, and it makes it more difficult. So we've done a few here. So let's go ahead and we hold the tail, put the tail down to secure that, and we pull this and it just zips closed. And we can see that our design is continuous across the seam. So now you can see it's hard to tell exactly where that tail came out the last time over here to see where we're going to go down, see? So I have to loosen it up a bit to see, okay, it's coming out of this hole. So here's the next bar. And I'm going to go up. And so now I'm going to speed this up again so we can get up to the top so we don't have to watch through the whole thing. Or you can watch quickly. Okay, now we're nearing the top again. And we're going to do that same figure eight maneuver at the top to secure the top and make the edge smooth. Okay. I love the zipping part. So fun! Okay, so that looks really pretty. equally nice looking. You can not see the green yarn. So now let's go through the top. We ended on the right side piece so we're going to go under the left side piece first. We go under that bind off stitch both legs. Go under both legs of the last bind off stitch on this side from front to back. Both of these maneuvers are front to back. Let's get that tail down there. And then front to back again on this side. And we'll have our figure eight. You can see the figure eight. 
there's the figure eight and you're going to pull that tight and it makes the edge once the tail is seamed down perfectly smooth across the top so we have a smooth bottom smooth top let's look at the other side so in this one we're going to have this seam one stitch on either side and we can see our seaming thread it's been gone through every bar this makes a very secure seam and it is stretchier than the other one let's stretch this one when we stretch this one it's very secure also it's just not as stretchy from top to bottom okay let's do the third one now this one I worked the swatches with a stockinette stitch salvage which you may do sometimes so I wanted to show how to do this also I'm going to thread my needle again and this one we're also going to be going between the last salvage stitch between the salvage stitch and the edge stitch the same as we did before so we see we have a stockinette stitch edge on these see we have the bumpy edge you can see the bumpy edge versus the smooth edge we're going to start out with our um, we want to make sure both the cast on edges at the bottom bind off edges at the top we're going to come under the cast on edge between the salvage stitch and the first stitch in on both sides come from back to front back to front back to front makes the figure eight and pull the figure eight tight we stopped on the right side so we're going to go to the left side and we're going to go under the bar between the salvage stitch and the first column in same as we did on the last swatch it's just that that salvage stitch has been has been worked in stockinette and we're going to work our way up all the way to the top and then we'll compare this seam with the previous one and see how it looks So as we get up here towards the top, a little tip that I can tell you after watching all this is when you take your needle and you go down in the same spot where you came up from the previous stitch, go down in the same hole being careful not to split that yarn and you just dip your needle up and it will come through the next bar. It'll come below the next bar. Go down in the hole, dip your needle up, it picks up the bar. Go down in the hole dip your needle up down in the hole and you can't even see the bar you can't see it but when I pull my needle up there it is and we're going to do that same figure eight bind off at the top and we're going to zip that's the fun part and we'll go, we'll go under both legs here from front to back remember at the bottom it's back to front at the top it's front to back front to back pull it tight so when you weave this tail in right here this is how it's going to look 
Now let's look at this swatch. Looks really nice. Let's turn it over. We have the same seam we did. I think it's less bulky though. I think I like this one. Let's look at this close. See this is the seed stitch one. It's real bumpy. This is the stockinette. It lays flatter. If we turn them this way. This is bumpy. This is smooth. And I think it lays flatter. It lays, lays down closer to the fabric. So there you have it. Three ways. Let me get them all out here. Three ways of seaming seed stitch that are all acceptable. It's personal preference. Whatever you like to do for your project. And I hope that you choose to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Down at the bottom somewhere there's a share button. You can click on that. Use your cursor. Click on that and you have a lot of choices of where to share my videos. There's also an address that you can see down there. You can copy that and paste it into any media forum or email it to someone. Text it to them. You can share my videos. Subscribe. Give me the thumbs up. Leave me comments. I love to hear from my viewers. And I also have two groups that you can join if you want to join in the conversation about learning about the technical aspects of your knitting. One group's on Facebook. It's called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. The other is on Ravelry. It's also called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. All you have to do is ask to join and I'll put you in there and you can join in the conversation. I hope you come back and watch more of my videos. I hope this helped you and happy knitting! Music